I'm breaking down the point color tool in Adobe Lightroom Classic. If you're new here, my name is Hannah and I'm a travel and nature photographer. And if you've been here before, welcome back to another one of my videos. If you have no idea what the point color tool is, you're probably not alone because it's very hidden in Adobe Lightroom Classic. You'll find it in the color mixer panel. And I use it really selectively, if I'm being honest, because it is very powerful. It allows you to differentiate between colors when we're talking hue, saturation, and luminance. So I'm gonna jump into Lightroom so that you can kind of see it in action. I chose this photo for really one reason, and that's because we've got these purple loop in here that's also picking up a little bit more of a blue shade, and then you also have the blue sky here. So typically I edit with my presets and have already applied one, but wanted to show you the before, so I'm gonna go ahead and reapply that. So this is with my High Alpine preset. So you can see that it kind of changes the overall look, clarity, and just colors as well. So what is this point color tool I'm talking about? And let's see it in action. So you'll find it under the color mixer tool. So if you select point color, this is the screen that pops up. The key player here is this eyedropper tool. So like I mentioned, these purples are now even more blue in hue than before. And I really want that purple color to come through. So that's where this eyedropper tool comes in. So I'm gonna go ahead and select it and I'm gonna hover over it. And you can see that it magnifies the color that you're hovered over. And I'm gonna select that by pressing it on my mouse. And you can see the hue has been selected. So we've got a hue shift, saturation shift, and luminance shift. So this is changing the hue of that precise color that you selected with your eyedropper tool. So if I slide this to the right, you can start to see those lupin become even more purple in color, but you can also see that the sky is changing, right? So if I slide it to the left as well, the same thing is happening. Those lupin are losing all of their purple and the sky is starting to look a bit more cyan or teal. So if I reset that, let's go ahead and just bump that up a little bit here so that those purples are really starting to come through. I'm starting to still see a bit of a color shift in the sky right here. So that's where this range tool comes in as well as the visual range. So I'm gonna go ahead and select visual range and it's going to block out any of the colors that are not included in this point color hue shift. So if you move the range to the right, it's decreasing that range. So it's making the color shift smaller and more on specific parts of your photo. However, if you slide to the right, you can start to see that it's opening up that range and it's going to cover more of the similar colors in your photo. So for the sake of that, I'll reset and I'm going to just bump that down a little bit because I really want the focus to be on these lupin, right? I don't want the sky to change too much. So I'm liking where that's at. I'm gonna shut off this visual range so I can see those colors again. I might bump this up a little bit more and you can see the differentiation already happening. So you're seeing the purple here really be a true purple color, whereas up here you get that differentiation of the really true blue sky. So saturation is working as saturation. So it's showing you how much of that visual range is actually going to be saturated. So you can bump that up a little bit more and as well as luminance, so how bright or dark that selected color is. So obviously that's very dark and we want that a little bit more on the natural side. So I'm gonna go ahead and kind of leave it there, deepen it a little bit, but not too much. So not only is the point color tool good for situations where you have two different hues that share the same spectrum, but it's also really great for correcting skin tones, for sunsets where you want a deeper differentiation between the yellows and the oranges. So in comparison to the color mixer, which allows you to manipulate hue on a slider, this is just a very precise way to manipulate a hue. So there's a couple other little hidden tools within this point color tool that you can use to manipulate those specific colors of your choice. And if you select this little drop down arrow here, you're gonna see a sort of like color palette enlarged hue slider. So I'll scroll up just a bit so you can see the rest of that. So if I select this center tool here, I'm gonna go ahead and move that. And you're starting to see that saturation and hue slider move around as well as those 
purple colors are changing and the saturation is changing within the photo simultaneously. And again, because I set that range, it's only changing the range I selected. So I'm going to reset that and you've got this separate tool over here. This is your luminance. So you can see it start to change on the slider and in the photo respectively. If it's possible to even be more precise with those color shifts in hue change, that is where you would be doing that. I'll go ahead and put that tool up and scroll down to this other little drop down arrow here, which brings you to your ranges of what you are editing. So to show you, I'll select visual range, and this is the current visual range that I selected up here. So if I go ahead and expand this range on the hue slider, it's going to expand to also include more of those blues. I'll reset that so you can see saturation as well. So if I select saturation, you can just start to see a bit of color change here, just showing us what is being selected. And same goes for the luminance. So if I select all of that, I'll unclick visualize range. I'll go up here and change luminance. And you can just see that it's all of the blues and all of those purples. So if I reset that, I'll reset my luminance range. And we're back to where I first edited in these three simple shift sliders. I've got this. I'm gonna show you the exact changes we made sort of in a three-step process. So we're gonna walk through the raw file, then we're gonna walk through the changes made when I applied my preset, and then we're also gonna walk through the changes made when I made adjustments in the color mixer and point color. Keep in mind when we're looking at this before and after, I've obviously applied a preset, so when I shut off the color mixer changes, it's gonna take away any of those color mixer changes that my preset did make. Okay, so here we go. We have the raw file here. You can see that there is a clear differentiation between purple and blue. And then that is with my preset. So we're gonna hit this eye and we're gonna shut it off. So this is without any color changes. So this is how my preset would look if I didn't make any adjustments in the color mixer. But because I did, it's taking away any of those changes that I made. So when I turn this back on, we're gonna start to see those greens come to life in a whole new way. But that's not the main focus here. The main focus here are these purples, right? So it's this purple and blue. So we're seeing this vibrancy come out of these purples and a differentiation entirely from these blue colors. So this point color tool is extremely precise and extremely powerful when it comes to color manipulation. There you have it. That is the point color tool in Adobe Lightroom Classic. As a reminder, you will find this tool under the color mixer panel, and I really encourage you to use it. It's super powerful, especially when you have a couple of very similar colors and you want to differentiate them even more. And they especially come in handy when we're applying presets and we're trying to manipulate those presets to be more of our own style and to show precisely what we're trying to show through our photo when it comes to color. Again, if you are interested in more editing videos, I will go ahead and link the playlist in the description below for you. As always, thank you so much for watching. Can't say it enough, it truly means the world to me. And that's it for now. I'll catch you in the next one.